Hello, today we'll be going to practice questions 11 to 20 for the CompTIA Pentest Plus exam. Let's begin. During a security assessment, a penetration tester uses a tool to capture plain text login credentials under communication between a user and an authentication system. The tester wants to use this information for further unauthorized access. Which of the following tools is the tester using? The correct answer is B. Wireshark Wireshark is a network protocol analyzer that captures and inspects packets on the network. If communication is unencrypted, it can reveal plain text credentials transmitted between a user and an authentication system. Why do the options are incorrect? A. Burp Suite This is primarily used for web application testing as an intercepting proxy, not general packet capture across the network. C. Zap This is similar to Burp Suite and used for web application testing, not broad packet sniffing. D. Metasploit This is an exploitation framework used to develop and execute attacks, not primarily for capturing and analyzing plain text network credentials. Therefore, the correct answer is B. A penetration tester established an initial compromise on a host. The tester wants to pivot to other targets and set up an appropriate relay. The tester needs to enumerate through the compromised host as a relay from the tester's machine. Which of the following commands should the tester use to do this task from the tester's host? The correct answer is D. When a penetration tester has a compromised host and wants to pivot through it to enumerate other targets, tools like proxy chains are used. Proxy chains allows redirecting traffic through a proxy or relay, making the compromised host act as the pivot point for further enumeration. Why the other options are incorrect? A. This attempts to pipe NMAP results into NC on SSH. That isn't a valid pivoting setup and wouldn't establish a relay for scanning. B. This is a manual backpipe trick for relaying data, but it doesn't integrate with enumeration tools like NMAP for pivoting in a practical way. C. This only sets up a simple netcat relay to a target port, while it tunnels traffic is not a clean or scalable method for pivoting an NMAP scan. Therefore, the correct answer is D. A penetration tester is unable to identify the Wi-Fi SSID on a client's cell phone. Which of the following techniques will be the most effective to troubleshoot this issue? The correct answer is B. Channel scanning If a penetration tester cannot identify a Wi-Fi SSID on a client's device, the most effective troubleshooting technique is channel scanning. This allows the tester to cycle through available wireless channels to detect hidden or less obvious SSIDs that may not appear during a quick or single channel scan. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Sidecar scanning This is not a standard Wi-Fi reconnaissance technique. This is a distractor. C. Stealth scanning This usually refers to port scanning techniques in network recon, not wireless SSID discovery. D. Static analysis scanning This applies to software or code review, not wireless networks. Therefore, the correct answer is B. During a web application assessment, a penetration tester identifies an input field that allows JavaScript injection. The tester inserts a line of JavaScript that results in a prompt, presenting a text box when browsing to the page going forward. Which of the following types of attacks is this an example of? The correct answer is C. Cross-site scripting The described behavior is cross-site scripting injecting JavaScript into a web application that causes a browser prompt to appear demonstrates client-side code execution, which is the hallmark of cross-site scripting. Why the other options are incorrect? A. SQL injection This targets the database by manipulating SQL queries, not JavaScript execution in the browser. B. SSRF This forces the server to make requests to internal or external resources unrelated to executing JavaScript in the client's browser. D. Server-side template injection. This exploits template engines on the server, not JavaScript injection in the browser. Therefore, the correct answer is C. A penetration tester attempts unauthorized entry to the company's server room as part of a security assessment. Which of the following is the best technique to manipulate the lock pins and open the door without the original key? The correct answer is D. Raking 
Raking is a lock picking technique where the tester scrapes a rake pick across the lock pins to quickly manipulate them into the shear line, often opening the lock without requiring the original key. It's one of the fastest and most common methods used in penetration testing for physical security assessments. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Plug spinner. This is used after successfully picking a lock in the wrong direction to rotate the plug the correct way, not for initial entry. B. Bypassing. This circumvents the lock mechanism altogether, but the question specifically mentions manipulating the lock pins. C. Decoding. This involves determining the exact key cuts or lock combination, often for recreating the key, not for directly opening the lock by manipulating pins. Therefore, the correct answer is D. During a penetration test of a web application, the tester gains full access to the application source code. The application repository includes thousands of code files. Given that the assessment timeline is very short, which of the following approaches would allow the tester to identify hard-coded credentials most effectively? The correct answer is A. Run Truffle Hawk against a local clone of the application. Truffle Hawk is designed to scan code repositories for secrets such as hard-coded credentials, API keys, and tokens by searching for high entropy strings and known credential patterns. Given the large number of files and the short timeline, it's the most effective automated approach to quickly identify hard-coded credentials. Why the other options are incorrect? B. Scan the live web application using Nikto. Nikto is a web server scanner that looks for known vulnerabilities and misconfigurations, not hard-coded secrets in source code. C. Perform a manual code review of the Git repository. This is effective and impractical with thousands of files and limited time. Is too slow compared to automated tools like Trufflehawk. D. Use SCA software to scan the application source code. Software composition analysis identifies vulnerable third-party libraries and dependencies, not secrets or hard-coded credentials. Therefore, the correct answer is A. A penetration tester is evaluating a SCADA system. The tester receives local access to a workstation that is running a single application. While navigating through the application, the tester opens a terminal window and gains access to the underlying operating system. Which of the following attacks is the tester performing? The correct answer is A. Kiosk Escape A kiosk escape occurs when a tester bypasses the restrictions of a limited use system and gains access to the underlying operating system. Opening a terminal window from within the restricted application is a textbook example of escaping the kiosk environment. Why the other options are incorrect? B. Arbitrary code execution. This refers to executing custom attacker supplied code. While related, the scenario is specifically about escaping a restricted interface, not arbitrary code execution. C. Process hollowing. This is a malware technique where a legitimate process is replaced in memory with malicious code. Not relevant here. D. Library injection. This involves inserting malicious libraries into a process to alter behavior. This isn't what is happening in this scenario. Therefore, the correct answer is A. A penetration tester needs to collect information transmitted over the network for further steps in an internal assessment. Which of the following would most likely accomplish this goal? The correct answer is C. Responder is a tool used during internal penetration tests to capture authentication credentials transmitted over the network. By poisoning LLMNR, NBTNS, and MDNS traffic, it tricks hosts into sending NTLM hashes or other sensitive info to the attacker. Running responder pi -i -e 0 wp sets it to listen on the interface and capture these credentials, which can then be used in later steps. Why did the options are incorrect? A. This is used for relaying captured credentials to other systems for authentication attempts, not primarily for collecting them. B. Netcat in this form sets up a listener, but it won't capture broadcasted or relate authentication traffic on its own. D. This attempts authentication using provided credentials, not passive collection of credentials in transit. Therefore, the correct answer is C. A tester plans to perform an attack technique over a compromised host. 
the tester prepares a payload using the following command. The tester then takes the shell code from the msfvenom command and creates a file called evil.xml. Which of the following commands will most likely be used by the tester to continue with the attack on the host? The correct answer is B. The payload was generated in c -sharp format using MSF Venom. Attackers often embed c -sharp shellcode into a malicious XML project file and then use msbuild.exe to compile and execute it. This is a well-known LOL bins technique for code execution on compromised hosts. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Red Server 32 is used for registering or unregistering DLLs and OCXs. It doesn't execute C -sharp XML project files. C. MSHTA.exe executes HTML applications, not C -sharp XML project files. D. AppInstaller.exe is used for installing AppX or M6 packages, not executing C -sharp XML payloads. Therefore, the correct answer is B. A penetration tester is developing the rules of engagement for a potential client. Which of the following would most likely be specified in the rules of engagement? The correct answer is A. Testing window. The rules of engagement define the scope, boundaries, and constraints of a penetration test. A key element is the testing window when the test will be conducted ensuring the client is aware of potential disruptions and that testing doesn't interfere with business critical operations. Why the other options are incorrect? B. Terms of service. These are general contractual conditions for service usage, not part of a penetration test ROE. C. Authorization letter. That is a separate legal document granting explicit permission to perform testing, not something defined within the ROE. D. Shared responsibilities. This is more relevant to cloud service agreements or SLAs, not penetration testing ROE. Therefore, the correct answer is A. We have come to the end of today's video. If you liked the video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Goodbye.